Hello, thank you for attending and welcome to this class on InfoWorks from beginner to expert in 45 minutes. My name is Ian Robinson and I'm the infrastructure consultant here at Greytech. I travel around from my base here in the UK helping customers get the most out of their infrastructure design and BIM related software. It includes training, consultancy, presentations, bit of social media. Uh, my main focus is Civil 3D and Map 3D with GIS being my background. Infoworks, Recap for your point clouds, Navisworks for your federated models and, and clash detection, and also BIM 360. There's four pillars to what we do here at Grey Tech. Create, simulate, fabricate, and manage. We work with the Autodesk portfolio and our own power pack enhancements to aid the creation of construction and manufacturing deliverables. We then combine this with our use of our own simulation products to verify those deliverables. And that enables us to drive them into the fabrication process. And we then manage them deliverables too. Added that to our with our CDE products linking to internal and external platforms. Now this class is very much in the create phase of the project using InfoWorks, a little bit of AutoCAD and touches on Revit. Uh, this is going to be early stage design. We're going to make a 3D model of a proposal of a new commercial development. We're also going to use a little bit of BIM 360, which our own product OpenTree works with. Um, and obviously that is it within the manage phase. You should go and see the OpenTree classes that we've got on here. They're excellent. We need to do four things. We need to plan. We need to plan what we need. We need um, where the proposal is going to be. What information do we need? What we're planning to do? Are we doing a road, a housing estate, that sort of stuff? Uh, we need to consider uh, constraints as well at this early stage. No point planning early stage design to discover uh, two weeks down the line that the site actually floods. Then we need to procure. We need to get hold of data. Have we got any models already being created? Um, has the architect done his bit? We need to then procure mapping data. We need to procure landform, all that sort of stuff. So we've got to think about that. Uh, then we're just going to dive straight in and model up our proposal. As it is a beginner to expert class, we'll be we'll be adding in some nice more advanced tricks early on in the stage as well, just to, to help you get the most out of this class. Then after that, um, we're going to share. We're going to share the model with images, videos and, and what have you. So let's get straight in and work out the plan. So we're going to do a new commercial office in Exeter. Um, it's a, a, we've got a Revit model. We've already got that completed by the architect. Uh, we've also got a site plan as well from the architect. Uh, we need to check whether the site floods because uh, it's near a river. And um, we also need to um, just make sure uh, we're going to design um, a car park with a new road um, for the office as well. And then we're going to share it with our colleagues and partners. So we'll create a web link um, so that people can just view it in a web browser without having to mess about um, downloading software or anything like that anybody can have a look at it they can measure and mark up uh, and stuff like that we need to get some data so uh, i'm going to go to data.gov.uk site uh, there i'll be able to get landform data constraint data as well uh, we can have a look at other options in there while we're there uh, there's also a link in there to the OS Open Data Portal, although I know where that is, so I'll just go straight to the OS website for that. Uh, there is some changes happening there, so this should be interesting. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the decision now not to buy any data. So this whole project is going to be done on open source and free data. Keep the costs down. But just note that there is higher quality data out there, um, but the stuff I'm going to get fabulous so don't don't worry about that but if you do need things like building height information then that data does exist um, and that is there so you can you can uh, can get hold of that now because we've already done our inquiries at the planning stage we know that we're going to need to get the revit model from the architect it's already done and we also need to get the site plan from him as well because that is also already done then we're just going to go and model it okay we'll just go and build our model once we've finished building our model, we're going to share it. Now to share it, we do have a BIM 360 account. So we're going to use that and that's going to allow us um, to uh, anybody in, uh, to create a shared view of our model and share that with the world. 
but also even if you don't have a BIM 360 account, what we can also do there is share it with everybody within our organization. They can, um, anybody can download and use InfoWorks. So if you've got InfoWorks downloaded, installed, if you have a license, you get all the tools that you're gonna see today. If you don't have a license, you can view any of the models read only and that can be either stored locally on a on a central server drive or it can be in a bim 360 account whichever whichever you've got we'll then make some um images and uh, we'll do a video for presentation and stuff like that now because we are tight for time i have pre-done some videos but i'll show you how quick they are to do and you'll you'll go oh, yeah that was easy so we'll uh, uh, let's just crack on let's get straight in right We've done the planning, so now it's time to do the procurement and get hold of the data that we need. First things first, we have a Revit file. So this is the office and we're going to be placing this into a ground model and put some decorations around it and then present and share this 3D model here. Okay, so it's uh, an office building. It's quite a detailed model. You know, it's got all uh, the office equipment in there and everything's in there um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to also look at what else have we got well we've got an AutoCAD plan as well here so we received these two things from the architect um, and this one is georeference it's in the right place in the world uh, if I go to the model layout there it is in the world if I was to turn the map on you'll see, in fact, if I put it on hybrid, you'll see that it's in Exeter down here. Okay, so let's turn that back off and zoom back in. And what we want to do is get as much information out of this first to be able to put into our model. Now we could go straight into InfoWorks and just sketch it out. So you have all these sketchy out kind of tools for um, for InfoWorks for sketching stuff out, but if you've got the information already, why not use it? So that's what we're going to do. We need to export this information and we need to export it in, in multiple ways. Um, first things first, we have the layout. Okay, so this is the, the layout that we, oh, sorry, go to layout. This is the layout that we're going to put into InfoWorks. I'll um, just freeze that Revit model on there, don't need that. Um, and we can export these as a shape file, which is a, a geospatial file. Now, if you're using AutoCAD, this isn't AutoCAD, this is AutoCAD Map 3D. It could have been AutoCAD, look, I can go to Drafting Workspace, 2D Drafting Workspace, and it's just plain old boring AutoCAD. But because we're using Map 3D, everything can be georeferenced, it's all on the British National Grid and we can export using spatial files if you're unsure how to do all of these things or what sort of data or what geospatial files are go and see my other classes on using ordnance survey and various other data sets i've done one specifically for ordnance survey here um, and i've done previous classes on uh, just digital data in general and in fact if you go to the blogs you'll be able to get a download of all the uh, data sheets with where to get the data from etc but because we're a little bit limited on time, we need to make sure that we can just get this information in and out um, of your brains as quickly as possible. So to do this, we'll do a map export because we're going to use InfoWorks and InfoWorks is a geospatial tool. So let's go in and put this in the uh, right place. And here it is, my exports folder. And we're just going to call this one layout. An Esri shape file um, needs to be defined the object type. So we've got polygons here. Now the polygons have to be closed polylines. So as long as they're closed, they can be uh, done as polygons. We need to go to our layer manager and pick the layers that we would like. So I want to do the building layout, the car park. Don't want the fence. I'd like the grass area and the building itself. Okay, so we're gonna export all of these and we'll go to the data uh, we can also export the properties the AutoCAD properties so if I go to the layer and export that 
and then go to the options and I can change it from the British National Grid if it wasn't on it but it is so that's fine and we need to tick that treat closed polylines as polygons and hit OK so that's going to export them let's just open up an empty file and see what we've done okay so I wanted to go to the right place so let me get to the right place and here it is exports so this is the layout so I'll just drag and drop that so that's what we've got now because we're using map 3d I'll switch to the mapping workspace um, and we've got data fields in here now so let's open up the data fields. so there we are we've got a grass area a car park a building layout and the building and in fact you could even style them up in here if you wanted so if you wanted to to show it in here just to prove a point more than anything so if I style it by layer I'll just do random styles building building layout car park let's make that gray and the grass area let's make that green in fact we don't really need to see the car park do we we can actually just see the boundary for it if we want just set it to no color that's an option uh, and there we go so we've got some spatial data that we can now use in InfoWorks let's go back to our layout um, and we've also got a fence as well so if I just go to the layer state for fence that's the fence which is just a polyline just a, a standard 2d polyline there we are 2d polyline and we'll do the same again so we'll map export and we'll call it fence spell it right and this time it's just a line there we are we will pick the layer that we want the one called fence and in the data we don't really need any attributes this time because there's only one fence but of course you could put attributes in if you have multiple lines multiple types of fences maybe a fence and a wall and stuff like that and of course you can't you're not treating them as polygons because it's just a line so you that's grayed out this time so you can't go wrong really and if we just prove a point let's stick that fence in there fence shape we now have this green line here which is our map features the fence running around uh, if i turn them off you'll see it a bit better oh turn them off there we go so that's what we're going to use in infoworks so we've got all our model data ready to do our 3d modeling next we're going to look at the landform data where do we get that from without spending any money we've got a couple of places we can go to and option one is in infoworks this is where i'm going to be working but in infoworks we could use model builder here and what we need to do is find where our site is and it will build a model for us um, there's a couple of really nice things you can do with this is what we could also do in in AutoCAD so if I go back to AutoCAD map 3d and my layout and if I just change this back to um, what we're going to do I'm going to go to layout there we can export that line there as a shapefile as well let's do that and it'll tell us in infoworks where that is which is brilliant so if i do map export again and this time i'll just call it site shapefile uh it's going to be a polygon we can we need to set money we've pre-selected it so if you've pre-selected just click the select in drawing it picks it and you've got one object selected um we can filter by layer and stuff like that but we don't need to and we don't need the data we just need it as a polygon so if i go okay to that and just check what we've done prove a point so my site if i go in there is there so it's just a polygon there now i need to know where in the world that is in here well it's brilliant because i can import that shape file so let's go and find that shape file and here it is site uh, you do need to also import the projection because obviously that's on the British National Grid and the world map is not on the British National Grid it can't be so you import the 
projection file and the shape file and it should zoom me to it brilliant the mint very nice okay so that's where we are in the world um, and then I can say well I want a bit more than that I can just drag that out put that where I want to put it okay so we can adjust the size and the shape if we need to if we want just a little bit bigger than that site okay so that's that is an option but the data we get from here so you'll get open street map which is rather nice it'll give you a few buildings maybe not all it all depends how many people have modeled these buildings if they're not modeled in open street map you'll they'll just be empty uh, we'll get all the roads from here and we'll also get uh, aerial imagery so we'll get a bing map which is exactly the same map that we're going to get if we were uh, using AutoCAD's uh, online mapping service as well, the Bing Maps. But the land data was collected way back in about year 2000 um, uh, by the Space Shuttle Endeavour um, and it was done at one arc second. So it's about a 30 metre grid, which is quite good for free data, but it's very old. You know, it's nearly 20, if not over 20 years old now. And our other option then, so let's have a look at these other options, is we could go to the Ordnance Survey. The Ordnance Survey have got a, an open data portal. This is free to use for everybody to use. And there's some brilliant data in here. And we're going to be getting some from Open Map. We're going to get the buildings from here, but I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. Um, we have Terrain 50. So this is uh, up to date. Um, so July 2019 uh, is the version that this is. We can download it as contours in a shape file or we can download it as an ASCII grid file, which is the one I would use if I was going in, putting it into InfoWorks. It's on a 50 meter resolution. So although it's more up to date, it's actually lower resolution. So it's great for really large areas if you're doing a major um, planning project, maybe wind turbines or something like that. But for this tiny area, it's it's not really high enough resolution for us. But it's a good start. You, you may have to start on something like that. At least it's good quality data and it's up to date. Just just very low resolution. Um, our other option is to go to the open data sort portal from data.gov. And again, go and see my presentations on using digital data in Autodesk software. Um, and I'll explain all about the Inspire Directive and there's a download um, document for you to use uh, in the download area, um, both here and also on our website um, where I've put a blog about that subject, um, how to get there. And in here, we've got all the environmental data. It's a, it's a portal where government agencies share their data. So if they've gone out and surveyed it and we've got some high quality LIDAR data, it'll be in here. And this is the area where you go to get that. And again, we can just move around and try and find the data or we can import a shapefile. It does need to be zipped up. So we'll zip it up and we'll import a shapefile and it'll take us to our area again. Here's that folder where that shapefile is. I've just zipped it up. Just drag and drop the shapefile in there. It will analyze that and tell me where it is. And that's where it is. Brilliant. So that's the tile I need, SX99SW, and I can go and get available tiles, and we'll see if they've done that area. One of two things will happen, they'll have either done the area and it'll be in a tile, there'll be one there, or it will not be there. Um, or it'll be really old or low resolution. Here we are, so you've got DSM, which is a digital surface model, so that would actually have all the buildings in it. Not as buildings, it's like a surface model that goes over the top of the buildings. Good for line of sight for large scale projects. DTM is the ground model, so it's just the ground model of that. Now this is done at one or two meter resolution. It does go down to 25 centimeter in places. Obviously the Environment Agency are not, you know, their remit is not to LIDAR all of Great Britain. That's the Ordnance Surveys and they've done that, the Ordnance Survey, at a five meter grid for a paid for data set um, but the environment agency will have, have done where it's important to them and this is a flood alleviation scheme so I'm pretty confident the data will be there and we'll go and have a look um, now it's going to give us this one here which is SX99SW southwest so that will be 25 tiles 
25 one kilometer tiles and we only need one of them so we'll need to work out which one it is um, you can go onto the OS website and it'll tell you which tile it's on um, alternatively you can go uh, I've, I've created um, a DWG with a link to these tiles so I can just zoom in on on, a, on any drawing and see which tile it is I've already done that I know which tile it is but basically you just click that and you go and download it so that's going to be the best free option it's going to be the highest resolution if the data is in the area where you're working which in this case it is if it isn't you go up to five meter resolution and pay for the data or you go to 50 meter resolution free high quality data or 30 meter resolution meh bit old but it's a good start if you've got nothing else while we're in here talking about data i mentioned about open street map you know if you go into here and do model builder it's going to use open street map there is a website for that as well so open street map is in here and um, we can go and find where we're working um, which is exeter we're near that flood alleviation scheme so we should be able to find it easy enough here it is okay so this is our site here now you can see all the buildings that have been done in here so it'll actually be well covered will this by open street map and each one of them will come in if you use the model builder as an actual building which is brilliant if you go to somewhere maybe a little less covered there's a lot of places which isn't covered if you're in the suburbs there's a village then there's no buildings apart from the church and the primary school and the major ones but obviously nobody's mapped these so you will find when you use model builder you won't get coverage of all the buildings you'll just get important ones unless you're in like a major city uh, and what have you so we can also get our buildings from the ordnance survey as well and the product you would use for that is open map local uh, vector so that it'll, you can extract out of it just the buildings and in here um, the file format I would recommend is shapefile and you can just pick SX down here it's a hundred kilometer tile so it's going to be huge is the data set but we've got some nice little tools to cut it down we can cut it down ourselves in 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 AutoCAD map 3d or civil 3d but um, Infoworks will do that for us so we can just download that whole tile and then we can just drop the buildings in so we'll be having a look at that as well okay back to Exeter so we're gonna get this and we're gonna take our get our tile um, which we got from the environment agency um, free of charge data.gov and we're gonna drop that straight in there and this is what it looks like when you download that tile um, there'll be 25 of these one kilometer ones you just need to know which one it is um, it's actually 9192 just checked it up on the OS website and we can just drag and drop that in now it's a big tile it's much bigger than our site all we need to do is tell it it's on the British National Grid and in the raster clip it to the extent of the model you also need to put this null data value in again I explained that in other other presentations basically it's where they haven't surveyed it will leave a gap and we can fill that gap with other free data if we have one key thing is just stick it in see what it looks like if there's holes in it go and find some more free data either through model builder or through the OS and uh, use that um, I don't think there's any any gaps in this one there we are there's our land okay aerial imagery so to put aerial imagery on that the only real free source is Bing Maps and we can do that here with our database connectivity we can connect to Oracle and various other things and again we'll, we cover that in other other presentations with the Bing maps we'll just okay it okay it and refresh it don't ask me why you have to press that refresh no idea you just do and that's the best source of free uh, aerial imagery it is what it is you know whatever's on the server at um, uh, Microsoft Bing Maps server is what you'll get and you know if I refresh that in Five years time it'll be whatever's on the server in five years time okay so this is the site we're going to work on. so we've got this big hill here so we do have to be careful you know what we what we're building um, this is the road we're going to be attaching to and we're basically chopping down all these trees don't tell anyone uh, and we're going to put our site in there we have to offset the carbon won't we 
Uh, we've already done that. We've already got that site information. Remember them exports that we did? So if we go and do the layout and just drag and drop the shape file on there and tell it that they're coverage areas. So coverage areas are just areas that cover the land, which is great. Uh, we can also describe them because we exported the layer. So they can have a description about the layer and then we can do clever things if we want to later on. Again, geolocation, you need to tell it's on the British National Grid. But we did that already in AutoCAD map, so there's no problem there. And on the source, you just tell it whether you're going to drape it on the surface and whether you do need to click to model extends. We don't need to click to model extends because we know it's smaller than this model. So I just drag, just uh, hit close and refresh. It'll look like nothing's happened, but you'll see there's these things on here. Look, there you go. There's all the uh, areas that we want. Okay. Now for the expert user, it's not so bad on something as small uh, as small as this. We, we, we can just chuck materials on it. For example, I could just go into my style palette. And in the style palette, we have all these materials here. And we could say parking area and just drag and drop that onto the parking area and then drag and drop them on uh, other areas. Or we could be uh, a little bit cleverer and we could start putting different materials on different element now if we use our um, style rules what we could do is we could go into coverage areas we've got a whole load out of the box that's in there I'm just going to get rid of all that well just select all and delete and we're going to create another one so this is the kind of more expert user stuff so we'll create another rule and we'll call this one car park and we'll create another one, call it grass building and layout. Uh, I'll put it B layout, building layout, layout. There we go. And we can just run some queries. So if we go into the expression editor, we can edit the queries and we can say, so we told it to make the description. So you could say if the description equals. Now this bit you have to get the words exactly right so if i called the layer building with a capital b i have to put it in with a capital b so if i just go description it'll tell me them all there so i just go building so uh, or car park or whatever you know you just pick the one you want in there um and i could i could copy that onto the clipboard just to make life easier in fact i won't copy all of it i'll just do description equals copy that and then i can put in a material so if I go to materials go to car parks parking area and pick a material and okay and for the grassy area just edit it paste description grass area and make that grass so material will be terrain grass and for the building edit the expression paste it and go building and we'll put a material on there um yeah i don't know we have, you could do with adding materials i guess further it all depends doesn't it if the, if the if the revit model doesn't have a bottom floor which is sometimes the case isn't it um but i'll just put this diamond kind of shape on it on there and then the building layout, so that's around the edge of the building. Again, just copy, uh, so just paste uh, description, and that was building layout. And we'll add the material in there for uh, blah, blah, blah. I'll just, just for speed, we'll, um, we'll use one of them, Let's see what it looks like. We can always change it afterwards. And then we can just save it and commit the rules and it should color them up for us so if you had a big area with all that stuff there you go beautiful now it drapes it on the surface which is fine for the car park uh, for the um this area here but for the actual car park you could probably do with maybe just flattening that area and you can just do that by shaping the terrain and we'll just set that to a nice round 33 We'll do the same with the building, just make sure that that's nice and flat. It is. 
at 33. And then we're ready to put our Revit model in there. But we could do more. We've got that fence, haven't we? We exported a fence. So let's uh, import the fence. So we'll go back into my exports and just drag and drop the fence in. That's a barrier. So it could be a wall of, or, you know, it could be um, any linear object, really. Um, there's no data. We just need to make sure it's on the British National Grid. We make sure that it's draped on the surface. We don't need to clip it. And we'll style it. Um, I'll put it on buildings, haven't I? Uh, barriers, sorry. And we'll style it with a wooden fence. And that puts the fence on there as well. Excellent. So for all the buildings around here, all these extra buildings around here that we need to add in, um, we've gone to the Ordnance Survey and we've downloaded Open Map. So let's, uh, let's have a look at that. And here it is. This is what you get when you download it. Loads and loads of data. And it's, it's a big... It's a big data set, it's 151 meg, you've got surface water, you've got tunnels, rail, road, uh, electricity transmission lines, there's a, there's a whole heap of data in there and it's really big. Let's open up a map and just have a quick look at it before we drop it in. We'll just start with a new drawing. Another beauty if you download map instead of uh, AutoCAD. So this file here, it's quite big, just drag and drop it in. As I said, it's big. Give it a second. And there it is. There's all the buildings in this area here. Let me turn the map on so you can see it. It's huge. It's a hundred kilometer tile. So it's there all the way down to here. And we're somewhere in here. We just want a little tiny bit of that. We don't want all of it every single building where it where the free data differs from the paid for data um, if you look at something like a row of terraces so this here is a row of terrace houses with the paid for data master map each one of them will be an individual polygon with the free data the resolutions reduced down it's just one single polygon which could be fine for what we're doing we'll just do it and see what happens so let's just drag and drop that data into here. Tell it that they're buildings. We'll just put an arbitrary six meter height on them. And we'll go in here and make sure that we drape it on the surface. And the biggest important thing, click to the model extent. So otherwise it'll be hundred kilometers of buildings. You don't want that. No one wants that. Look how quick that was for that massive data set. So there's our building. Some of them have fallen off the map. So they, they kind of land underneath. So um, you can just pick them and drag them up. Basically, if a bit of it falls off the map, it just puts it at the bottom, level zero. So I'm just going to drag that one back up. But these are basically just background information, just to put some context around your Revit model. That's all it is. Um, if you wanted higher quality context, that's fine. Just buy the data. A site like this, buying the master map data, a site this size, oh, probably 50 to 100 quid. It's not, it's not really expensive. That's a big polygon. In there, I think there's a couple more in there. That one. You can actually multi-select. Just drag them all up. And then put the other ones down. So that one there, oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'll drag that one down as well. You don't want buildings flying in the air, do you? And of course, if you knew that this building was a little bit taller, you can just hit that and drag it up a bit, and manually adjust them. So that puts our site in a bit more context. Just sugar cubed buildings around there. Let's put the map data in there now. So we have here, go back to our layout. Um, we have here a layer state with the parking bays on it. What I want to do with the parking bays is I want this in a separate drawing. So I'm going to W block them out. 
clicking the drawing would help, wouldn't it? W block them out into a separate drawing. So objects, base point, I'm going to, uh, actually it doesn't really matter where the base point is, um, but we'll leave it where it is for now. The objects, I'm going to pick these objects here. I'm going to make sure I retain them, which I am, and I'm going to plunk that in the, the same folder. And here it is, and we'll call this parking. Oh, parking. Like so, and it's in meters, and I'm okay with that, and I think we're done. Don't need the map information. Okay, so we should have another drawing, which is just them parking bays. There it is. And that's just the parking bays, okay? They should be in the same place. I didn't move them. Find out in a second. There we are. So they are in the same place. And what we can do, notice I've left this fence line in here. Because if I was to uh, bring these into InfoWorks, there's, a, there's multiple ways of bringing these parking bays into InfoWorks, but this is my favoured one. So you'll see me do this in a lot, is I just drape it on here. So we can take this DWG and just drag it on here. Now there is an issue um, when you bring the DWG in, it uses a cloud service to do the conversion for you. Um, it doesn't take any credits off you, but uh, it goes, packages up, sends it to Autodesk. They do a little bit of conversion on it and then they send it back to us and it does it in the background so we don't have to worry about it but it doesn't scale it correctly and it doesn't put it on the British National Grid. So I've left that fence line in so that we can scale it and move it correctly in here. So I'll do it as a 2D overlay. You have three options here. If it was a civil 3D drawing, I would select that and it would create the surface. It would update the surface that's in here. If I had corridors in the civil model, it would create a component road. Um, so it'll model up the road for us. Um, uh, it'll do all sorts of stuff. So for the civil things, you'd use that. If I was just creating a 3D object, you know, maybe I wanted to put a traffic light in, so I'd create it in AutoCAD as a 3D object, and I can drop it in as an AutoCAD file, and it will create it as a 3D object. But in this case, it's an overlay, so we'll hit OK. There you go, it's saying, do you want to send it to Autodesk? Um, you do need an Autodesk 360 account, okay? So as long as you've got that 360 account, it'll work, but you don't. it doesn't take cloud credits off you. Now you'll see that it's going to chunk away in the background and it'll just let me know when it's ready. I'll give it one minute, probably less than that. No, it's ready already. It's ready already. Let's go for that. Um, now it knows that the drawing's in metres, but actually I think the conversion does some weird stuff because when I go interactive placing, can you see it's tiny? So I, I reckon it thinks that one unit is a, an inch in the conversion process because that's what they use in the uh, United States. But that's not a problem. Just double click to drop it. You do need to put some sort of coordinate system on here um, and then interactively place it, which I'd forgotten to do, and then close and refresh. So to move this, we can right click and interactively place. So I've got these points now that I can use. Double click to pick it up. Put it in the corner there and double click to drop it. Go and pick another fence line up. So I'll pick that edge, that corner up there, double click. And I'll place that on the other side. It lets you do up to three points, which is all you really need. Double click and I'll place that one there. There are my parking bays. Oh, looking nice, eh? So the next job would be to put the Revit model in. So we already have the Revit model, don't we? There it is. Uh, it's a RVT. Now you can geolocate Revit models, but you may find if they are a long way away from the origin, it breaks the model up. It doesn't look so cool when you do it. So I would suggest you do this method, which is have the layout in AutoCAD so you know where the Revit model is going to go, export that, and then just interactively place the Revit model in the right place. We, we're not looking for millimetre perfect accuracy in the position of this building in a conceptual design or a representation that we're going to send out on a, a video or whatever. It just needs to, to be close enough. 
So let's go and find uh, that Revit model. Here it is. So I'm going to take this one and just drag and drop that in. Again, it will use a cloud service. You have a choice, actually. Um, if you don't want to use the cloud service, what you can do is you can install Navisworks. And, in, and then you can get Infoworks to use Navisworks for the conversion tool, and then it will do it locally. Um, I haven't got Navisworks installed, so uh, I did that on purpose because there's sometimes uh, my customers don't have Navisworks installed. Um, so this is just showing you that you can do it without Navisworks installed. I have to say though, it'll be quicker if Navisworks was installed. We'll just let that bundle up and it'll go up to the cloud. And we'll let that do it and I'm going to pause this and we'll come back to it when it's done. It'll only take about mm, two minutes maybe. There it is progressing in the background. I can now carry on working. Uh, I said two minutes. To get to this point, it didn't. I didn't even pause it. It just did it. Um, so that's okay. We can carry on working in there. Now we want to put a road along this frontage here. Um, and we can use component roads for that. So we can create our own roads in here. Um, or we can just use planning roads. So if we're not going to be doing anything uh, too arduous, we'll just use a planning road. So I'm going to click on planning roads. Oh, let's put the panel over there. And we can choose, if I just get rid of that filter, any of these roads that are in here. Um, I've created some UK ones in here. So if I just go uh, UK, UK Street, uh, Urban, that will do. And I'm just going to draw a road, because the presentation is just going to be in this area here. So I'll just draw a road here. Like so. We now have a road in there. Okay, I've, I think the road's a bit a bit wide, so I might just uh, I'll just edit that down. We can do that in the style palette. Uh, I just need to remind myself what that. Oh, by the way, you know when I put that overlay on there, can you see now? I can't select anything under it because the overlay is in the way. That's fine. If you go to your manage tab and your model explorer, and just lock the overlay this parking overlay now i can pick things underneath can you see including that road which makes life easier um, if i want to make that road a bit narrower that's fine you can do it in the style so it's a um, uk urban single carriageway so if i go to my style palette and roads when i find them there they are uk urban urban singular i can create a copy of it actually if i wanted to couldn't i that might be even better just create a copy of it and I'll call this one single carriageway 5.5. And I find these easier if you have them as a list. You can see them better. So in here, at the moment, you can see that's 3.65. So if I go 2.75, it's now a narrower road. Um, same with the footpath. You know, it's 2 metres. I'll go 1.5. Like so. Now, if I wanted street lamps on it, I could also put them on as well. You can just go in here and go and uh, place decorations. And we'll put one on the footpath. And we'll just hit add. And we'll put a street lamp on. Um, trying to remember where they are. Let me find them. City furniture is where they are. And... Uh, uh, under here city furniture and there is a street lamp in here somewhere there it is so that puts the street light in we can see in the preview here that it's done it on both sides you can put one on one side and one on the other side and then stagger them if you want um, I'm going to space them um, 25 meters and I'm going to do a track oh I need to um, turn them around don't I so if I rotate them around the Z like so. Uh, I could just type 180 in there, would be better. Oh, 80. That would be better. Like so. And um, we can do a, a, a track offset here. You know, if I go in there and say minus 
uh, 0.3 you'll see it moves on I think one would be better and there we go so now we have a road with street lights on it as well and to add that to here and again this is a, a quick guide isn't it so to add that to there we can just drag and drop it on there and you'll see that road narrow and it'll have narrower footpaths and it will also have street lights on it as well which is really nice cool uh, Revit building should be done by now so let's go back to our data sources and look for the building there it is now it's realized it's a building which is quite clever really um, you don't have to be careful though. if it's going to be a building that's fine but if you're going to be putting this into navis works later on uh, then you'd be better not putting it in buildings because you might want to extract the buildings out of here and put that into navis works and of course if you do that and this is a building it will bring this office building so the revit model in and of course you want the revit model the original revit model to come in not the one that you've imported so in this case it doesn't matter it thinks it's in international feet don't worry about that we're not worried about that if you just go to the 3d model and have a look there it is so that's nice and ready to work all we need to do is interactively place it i'll just dump it anywhere for now and close and refresh Now we've got some nice grips here to spin it around, place it where we want to place it, spin it around a bit more, move it a little bit more, there. And there we are, very nice. These, um, even though I imported these, we can still edit them. So I can bring that down to the road. So although we use a shape file to edit them, add vertex, add another vertex, it's still an editable object. Uh, hold down control to stop it snapping like so next we'll add some decorations in there um, so I will put the background trees in here and we can do that with our trees we go to create environment and we'll do a stand of trees just pick one I'll pick a birch and we'll just draw a whole load of trees in a polygon here. You don't want to go up the hill too much, do you? Like so. So there's the trees. If I escape once, I can choose the density. And I can also choose the size of the trees. So I can make them bigger. Like so. So we've got some trees there in the background. You can randomise the trees. Uh, which is quite nice. If I pick this. And just tell it not to use a style. So they just become arbitrary things. And then we can go into the uh, style rules. Find trees. And I've created an expression here. Which has no expression in it. It's just added a load of trees you just literally add a tree pick it okay i've already done it um and then choose if i make that bigger a probability how many times how often are you going to see a red tree for example or a green tree so you can choose your probabilities based on that now if i okay that and just run that rule you'll get random trees really nice uh, one thing it will do though if you select one and select another to change the density it goes back 
to a normal one and you need to rerun the rules. Okay, so bear that in mind. In fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to up the density quite a bit more and then rerun the rules. One thing to note in here is we can import and export these rules. So once you've created your rules, you just can then, let me turn that one off. Got to do that, there you go. Once you've created your rules, um, you can then export them and bring them into any other model that you would like. Uh, let's just add some people and some cars and then we'll do a quick video. I'm gonna, I've run out of time, haven't I? Points of interest. If I type uh, auto, uh, no, it'll be a vehicle, vehicle. Let's stick a Mercedes in here. Let's stick an Alpha in there. We'll move them all about in a minute. Uh, let's stick uh, an Audi in there. It's obviously posh. Let's stick some people. A guy wondering what's going on with his work, with his life. Another guy. Get some uh, stuff like that. So we can spend some time modelling these things up. So I'll move the uh, the Audi into a parking bay. Spin it round like so. This guy's in a disabled bay. So, etc. Okay, and um, we've got some guys and people, and we'll have uh, this woman with the sun in her eyes talking to this guy here. There you go. Okay, so spend a little bit more time on that and we'll get some really, really good results. Okay, so I've just added a few more bits. I put some trees in, I put a palm tree in because we can. I put uh, a bus and uh, Belisha beacons and people walking and just some more vehicles. Um, I got that from the, I'm just gonna call it the Google warehouse, but it's changed, hasn't it? It's the Trimble warehouse. So we've got all sorts of stuff in here. So now we're going to do the outputs that we promised. So um, maybe you want to have some images. You, you can create bookmarks, which are quite useful. So maybe you want to have an image from here as you're coming around the corner. We can just add in uh, a bookmark. So we'll just go add and call it rear. And we can go in and maybe do an overview one. And call it top. Delete that one. I did it twice somehow. Uh, and call that one top. Oh, what am I doing? I'm doing a search, aren't I? Do an add. Call it top. And maybe a side view like that. So you can add in these bookmarks. And it just makes it easy for navigating around. You know, you can go in and add them in. And also they can be forwarded uh, in the outputs as well if you're using BIM 360. We can also start doing um, like uh, storyboards as well. So if I go into the storyboard creator, you can see I've got some in here already. I'm just going to delete them and we'll start again. Um, and we'll just go oh I need to go to that bookmark don't I so if I go back to that side bookmark there we are and we'll start off here okay um, we'll just add a camera path in here so add a camera path and then we'll go along to maybe here and then we'll come over to here And then what we'll do is we can add in like orbits and looks arounds and uh, recording a walk around so we could have a walk etc we could do a crane animation okay now with a crane animation if i just play it from the beginning so we're going up to here 
and then the crane one will go out and up and we can choose how far to go up you know so if I say 30 meters up distance back I'll be okay and distance left I'm going to go 10 meters left so as soon as I drag that you'll see what happens so we can change how they work each time then maybe we'll add in a orbit animation so it'll go around the office okay and we can choose to go left or right and we can choose how far so if I go 180 like so it'll go right around 180 degrees like so And you can spend a lot of time doing these videos and getting them all set up. We can even do um, uh, sun analysis. So if I was to move along here and go to here, let's see what the sun does. Okay, and we'll go in and we'll add a date and time analysis in here. Just set the time of the day, set the day of the year, the start time and the end time. So if I start at, say, um, let's go for... 5 a.m. Okay, and we'll finish around 10. I'll just say around 10. Okay, and um, we won't cut, we'll go from black. So if we play that, it'll show you what the sun does at that time of day. We can also add in. Um, add in um, title blocks and things like that so when I go back to the beginning and add in a title block drag that to the beginning in here we can move these over I have to move them all over so you can really just storyboard it and just shift things around and that title block there can be our new development Oh my god, if I could spell, that would help, wouldn't it? Um, and in there you can choose how big it is. Uh, you can choose where it's positioned, how much opacity it's got. Uh, if there's any transparency on it, how big it is, where it's going to land in the screen. Um, there's all sorts of things that you can choose in there. And again, we're going to do more presentations on that uh, in more detail because we're definitely run out of time now. But if I just play... We've got our new development and then we have a drive around and we whiz out and then we hit that button there to e export it as a video so then we'll have a video and then the very last thing is you can also do um shared views okay so uh, very quickly uh with the shared views they're over here that one there shared views i'm going to uh, show you one that i've done earlier but just to show you how to create when you do a new shared view don't use the entire model well, you could in this case we could use the entire model in this case um, and we'll name it we'll name it our new development development and we'll just hit share and that's going to chunk away and I'm going to show you here's one I did earlier this is it um, this is it in Internet Explorer. Note I'm not signed in. I don't need any special accounts for this. All I need is the address. Um, in InfoWorks, you just copy the address. It comes up with that. Um, and you just copy the address and you've got it. And now anybody, even my granny, can navigate around this model. And you can see where, the, where it's going to be. You can do measurements. You can do cross-sections. Um, the, there's all sorts there's, a, there's uh, you can see there pan you can put first person in and you can walk around uh, uh, walk around on the road so we can just navigate around using the arrow keys have a look in here okay so I'll get rid of first person and we'll just go on to site I'm underneath there aren't I Go on to site there and we'll do first person here yeah 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 and you can see we can have a look around the site and walk around it in a web browser 
in minutes. Brilliant, eh? And of course, there's other ways of sharing your model as well. So you can um, uh, share it in the cloud as in the BIM 360 so anybody else with InfoWorks can view it. If they've got a license for InfoWorks, they can manipulate it. If they haven't got a license, they can still download InfoWorks and use the model and see it and measure and have a navigate around in a full version of InfoWorks just with a non-editable so they can't edit any of the features. So you can give it to your bosses and things like that as well. Um, so that is that. Now it's time for a very quick, I'm afraid, Q&A. You're welcome to email me if, uh, um, uh, if you've got any long questions. And thank you for attending.